uh, and why the CPI is going to continue to go higher and higher. And unfortunately, this is the thing they look at. And I knew this number was going to come in hot if you, if you study the numbers. Uh, and if you want to hear something funny about the CPI, which, you know, we all know how much rental is. I've been saying over and over again, rental is a big part of it, Daniel. Uh, you know, 30% with shelter. You have uh, the oil and food. They were always able to strip out oil and food, which is, you know, over 20. So look at 55% of that index. So rental incomes are not coming down. Last month, if you look at where oil started, oil started, Daniel, at $86, and it closed the month, last month, at 80 right? So where is it now? It's like $86, $87 a barrel right now. So oil is already up. You know, it closed below eight, so it's already up 10%. That's going to be factored into the next CPI data. You have food, which is not moderating food prices, right? People still need to eat. We saw Pepsi come out and say, hey, we're good. You know, we, we're okay. We'll, we'll just have smaller cans and put less stuff in chips and you know, again, that they have ways of doing what, what they can do when it comes to food, right? People have to eat and, and you know, they, there's, they can control margins a lot easier by giving you less and not raising prices, but they're giving you less, right? That's the difference with food companies. But when you're looking all around, what does this mean? It means that this number coming hot, it's coming hot. We were looking, for me, I'm projected for this market to get slammed. It's going to get slammed. I think it's going to happen in a couple of weeks if that's going to happen in the next three months. But that was based on rates going... Finishing at four four and a quarter percent this year, not only a projection four point eight out to the, the peak rate they're saying four point eight, right? Yeah, that's what they're saying four point eight in in April. It's a guarantee right now of a ninety percent that we're going to get a seventy five basis point hike on November second, and the next meeting is in December. Now it's over a sixty two percent chance that they're expecting another seventy five basis point hike. So we're going to be at four point seven five. Right now the market's frozen. Right now, right we're seeing housing. You talk to housing developers, you talk, they're like, yo, holy cow. I mean, yeah. and, and every week that goes by, you, I mean, what a rate. So over 7%. So the Fed stop now, what would they go down? Maybe they go, they ease a little bit. They go down to 6%. People are going to run out and buy homes and shit. It, it was, it was, they were giving away free money. It was below 3% a year ago. So, you know, this, imp th we're under the impression that the catalyst is, hey, the Fed's going to stop and then wait. And even I was under that impression months ago when we were at 3%. They're not even stopping and waiting at four point seven five percent, right? Which is which is sick. Which is telling you all throughout all of next year, rates are going to be significantly higher. And guys, please pay attention to the presentation because it's massive. Look at the chart that I show you with earnings where they were two thousand eighteen, two thousand nineteen, where we couldn't grow earnings. Get the market went up. We trained twenty five times forward earnings. That was when earnings were one hundred sixty dollars. Daniel, they at two. They're expected to be two forty, and that's one hundred percent because of the eleven trillion that's in the market. The Fed's doing everything it can to get the eleven trillion out of the market. Rates were below two percent back then. We're going up close to five percent now. I mean, you think this is factored in? <laughs> I, I, I wish I, I. I hope I'm wrong on this. I just don't see where the demand's coming from. Do you see where the demand's like? Where is the demand coming? It's not coming from China. China's again closing for for, for COVID again. Uh, you know, someone sneezed again. So, where's the demand coming from? Where's the buying coming from? It's not coming from companies buybacks. They're not buying back their stock. They issue these buybacks. And they could do that, these buybacks over a year. Of they don't have to. That's that's the way it's set up. We could I could announce, hey, Curzio's going to buy back fifty trillion dollars worth of stock, and we don't have to buy back anything, and that's okay. They're not buying back stock with their stocks down 30 percent. Insiders are not buying here. They're laying off employees. What are they telling you? They're telling you that shit's going to get a lot worse. That's what Jamie Dimon said as well. You know, he said if you're going to raise money, raise money now. Yeah, that means. The market's really going to be shitty going forward. And I don't know how long it's going to be with the Fed not there to pick us up. And that's what you have to worry about because the CPI numbers, this number, I thought it would it would moderate, start getting a little bit lower. I mean, the core is still going up. It's still at highs we've not seen since since 84. It hasn't topped out yet. And it's not going to top out because of the way it's calculated. And that's what the Fed is looking at. And you need to understand that because, man, it's it's pretty ugly out there. The CPI and the PPI, right? I mean, I mean two in a row, we're, we're terrible. Yeah, and to your point, the shelter inflation and the rent inflation were up on a month-over-month -month basis, year-over-year -year basis, and they're highest on record. You don't like to hear highest on record in these types of environments and these types of readings. It's just it, it's going to be very volatile. We you have to you have to fight in the arena we're in. You know, we're all gladiators now, Frank. We've been thrown in here in the Fed. We just gotta you gotta survive and thrive. And to your point, money flow traders are a great way to do that. The the wild thing in Looking at the discrepancy, so Pepsi had strong earnings, positive comments from the CEO. Mm -hmm. Delta, same thing. They're already above pre-COVID 2019 revenue. So it's not to say that everything is terrible. However, the price action in damn near everything, darn near everything is terrible.
And that's just because of the way markets move and liquidity and all that kind of stuff. We don't need to get into that right now. I'm just saying when you're looking at individual companies or sectors or whatever, you just have to take with a huge pound of salt, Frank, about the Fed and the influence that they have, what they're looking at and pay attention to. If you want to buy some great stuff that looks too good to be true, scale in very slowly or sharpen up your trading uh, skills, Frank. Okay. So we're heading into earnings season and earnings season, last earnings season, you could say ended like you know, three months ago, but there's a couple of companies that report late and we saw the companies that reported late, which were FedEx, Nike, Levi's, CarMax, you know, a few others, uh, you know, not cherry picking here. There's just, you know, a few names that reported late, some do. And when you see what they said, what Nike's inventory up 23% last quarter, you know, now you, it's seasonal. You have to sell this, right? You got to sell at a discount. Nobody projected that there, they would see another 44% increase in inventories. CarMax, right? Remember that industry? That used to be great, great, great. Holy shit. That's rolling over. I mean, the, the cost to get a loan is incredible. Not to mention, you know, Ford. Ford announced, I think it was a $7,000 increase in August to its Ford Lightning, right? Their new EV. And then you had these tax credits that the, the president passed and said, well, we're lowering it by 5000 And then they just said that they're increasing it by another, what is it, $5,000 or something like that? Uh. I don't think they can make money on these cars at the current price that they're selling, right? So, which is crazy. And they're looking to spend $50 billion to push more and more into this industry when demand's crashing, absolutely crashing. Because people are like, holy shit, I got to cut back. They're seeing their portfolios down. They're seeing you know, the home prices start to decline. They're, they're seeing it, right? They're feeling it. So you have FedEx that remove guidance. I mean, is that the biggest? That's, you know, that's, they have consumer, they know more about the consumer than almost anybody outside of, uh, of Amazon, you know, AI all over their company for, for 10, 12, 15 years probably. Uh, and they've removed guidance. They don't even know. They're like, holy shit. They've removed, I've never seen. I, I don't can't remember. You know, I've been this a long time. I don't remember. I don't even know if 2008 that they removed guidance. Uh, you know, so these are companies that report late. It's important because they got to look at August. So the companies that are reporting now, let's go over that. Pepsi reported solid numbers and it makes sense, right? You're going to see some of these consumer staples and you're like, wow, Pepsi's, you know, off its lows. It's doing okay. You, you might want to buy that. You're going to be buying it, but it's trading at 23 times forward earnings. 23 times forward earnings and probably expected to grow those earnings maybe 7, 8%, which is, you know, gangbuster in this market, right? Which is phenomenal, right? So you're seeing earnings decline year over year already as of last quarter if you strip out energy because energy's earnings were up like, you know, whatever, thousand percent, right? Because it was like, you know, it's terrible and now, and it's going to account for a big part, not a big part of SP, but a big part of the earnings picture. But if you strip out energy, from earnings, right? Which is, I think it's like 13 sectors. So it's not like I'm stripping out just this to, to cherry pick here. It, it's, you know, you strip out energy because it's, it was, you know, 20 bucks and went to 80, right? So you've seen, you know, on average prices, they made a fortune in earnings. Uh, and they're increasing. But outside of that, you're seeing massive declines. You're going to see 10, 12% decline in banks, 15% decline year over year, which means why should we be trading at 15 times forward earnings, 17 times forward earnings when you're not growing earnings? I mean, this should be, we should be in trading at a single digit PE, a full PE when you're not growing earnings. And what do we see? A good example of this is Delta, which is a company I think, you know, is fantastic. It was, it was in a portfolio. We knew they were going to have strong revenue. It doesn't matter though. I mean, you have a liquidity event here where people are selling anything where Delta already got annihilated and fell. And now they come out and say they reported record revenue, the most revenue they've ever reported in a quarter and earnings. They missed earnings by a little bit because they said there was a three cent headwind because of Ian. Uh, and yet, you know, what happened for picking the right stock that reported good earnings? I mean, it's up one, what is it, up 1% right now. I mean, that that's the risk reward. You're looking at dividend stocks, utilities. Did you notice this, Daniel? Utilities are starting to roll over. That was like a safe haven. Why are they rolling over? Because why the hell would you buy a utility? Why would you buy a consumer staple at this price when you could buy the four year and get 4.2, 4.3% risk free? Why even take on the risk with the Fed constantly raising rates? Going to continue. This is a headwind. It's like you climb a cliff and you get up there and they punch you in the face and you fall down. You climb up there, you climb, get a lot, and they keep punching. The He's there to punch you in the face all through 2023 at least. They're going to continue to punch you in the face, meaning every time stocks rally, you're going to see people take profits. And you should because the Fed is out of control right now. And you know you might say they have to be and inflation is coming up. I don't think they have to go this high. I think they have to wait. Uh, they're going to overshoot. They're looking at lagging data. And the way this is calculated, CPI, well, rentals, I mean, listen, we have a supply problem. So you see home prices come down, which means people can't afford them. What are they going to do? They're going to rent. They're going to need to rent. So you're going to see rental prices continue to remain high. And and it's no surprise that during 2008, 2009, Daniel, when we saw the, market, the, the housing market absolutely collapse, you know, it didn't collapse? Rentals. 
And rentals didn't go up that much either. They were going up like two, three, four percent around. They weren't going up twenty percent from you know two thousand five. That's like home prices, right? And that was part of the CPI, which kept inflation in check. It's the opposite right now. So you have to be very careful what the Fed's looking at, and it's crazy.